This video is about five ways you can instantly make your videos better. And one of the things I want to point out before we get started is we're not going to talk about the quality of being a professional video. Most people come to YouTube to just meet people like you and like me, right? We're just working from our home, making videos, whether it's for business or fun or entertainment or whatever. And we're not really professionals and sometimes when people start making a youtube channel they feel like they have to be professional and that's fine if, if you want to take the time to do that that's fine and there are people out there that make amazing videos and they're very very professional and they're very proud of them but i don't feel like you have to do that to be successful and you can find out for yourself just go look at some of your favorite channels some of them the quality as far as professionalism is pretty bad but they're great they hold your attention and there's other things about the video that makes them successful so the number one thing I want to talk about is be consistent when you're providing content on your channel be consistent I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is they think they're just gonna put a video out every once in a while and if you do that, sure, a lot of people might watch one of them, but they're, you're going to get lost in the shuffle. They're not going to know when to expect you. They might hit that notification button, but not see you again for two months. And they might think, well, who is this person? I haven't seen them. So be very consistent. My advice, if you're a small channel, and I think most of your people who have made it really big will agree that in the beginning, the more the videos that you make, the better. Because what you're trying to do is get recognized by Google. When people go in to do a search, you want to have more chances. It's almost like more of a lottery. You want more opportunity to pop up and answer questions. Um, as you start getting more subscribers and you get monetized, then you can start looking at, at cutting it back. Right now, I'm making six videos a week. I did um, start taking Sundays off about a month ago, and I will start, I will continue to make six videos a week until I feel like it's time to cut back. So um, definitely, whatever you decide, if that's too much, then make two videos a week and make sure they're consistent. If you want to do them every Monday and Wednesday, every Tuesday and Thursday, whatever it is, be consistent and keep doing it. Number two, I'm giving you five tips. Here's number two. Get to the point. If you noticed when you came into my video, I told you exactly what we're going to talk about. And we started talking about it. I didn't give you a background story. I didn't um, give you a lot of fluff. Now, Background stories are good if they're relevant to what you're saying, but you still want when people pop in and watch your video right away, this is what I'm giving you. This is what we're going to talk about. Then you might give a background story and, and pre-phrase that. Say, you know, I'm going to give you this next point, but before I do, let me tell you a story that is connected with that. Um, and that makes sense. But if you just start telling somebody why they need to be listening to your video and explaining to them why and then you go off and talk about other things on tangents or you're adding a lot of fluff just to get the timer to keep running i've seen people do that it aggravates me um, because i'm watching the video i had a question i searched opened the video and yeah maybe they popped in and said this is what we're going to talk about but i'm in 10 20 minutes into the video and they haven't told me anything I shut it off if I last that long. But the point is, our time is precious. Your time is precious. And people don't want to sit there and listen to a bunch of fluff. And with that, let's get to point number three, right? Point number three. Point number three is don't be boring. And I haven't seen it very often, but I remember I was watching a video of this young man. He's probably in his 20s. And he was just really sharing he goes i'm so sorry that i'm low energy and and my voice is too low and and, and he was apologizing and i thought i didn't think he was bad i just took it that that was his personality but i didn't take it as he was boring and unenergetic there's a difference if you're a low-key person but yet you have a lot to say and you have some confidence there's nothing wrong with that but i'm talking about uh... <laughs> You know, if somebody's just there and just not really, it's like you're pulling teeth to get the information out, people are going to turn you off. So if you have trouble with energy, then maybe you need to do some jumping jacks or something like that before you get on. Maybe that's going to pump you up. Now, on the flip side, don't be who you're not. Don't feel like you have to get on here and be, you know, rah, 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 cheerleader or, you know, crazy. There's people that are like that. That's their personality and they're fun to watch. But if you're forcing that, then that's not good either. Just in a nutshell, just don't be 
low, low energy, you know your energy level. Be your best and, and be somebody that other people want to listen to. The next one is make sure your light source, this is number four, make sure your light source is in front of you and not behind you. I know a couple times I went to videotape a uh, one of my videos and when I sit at my desk, the stupid window is behind me. I don't have a shade on that window and sometimes you're just like, oh, I got to move everything. But I notice my whole face is shadowed out. That's because all the light is behind me. So yes, I need to probably change my office around and, and make it different. But right now I know that if I keep that light in front of me, then that's the best light that I'm going to get for that video. So just make sure, pay attention when you're looking at that webcam, you can kind of see um, what that lighting looks like. If you still don't seem to be getting good lighting, you might want to purchase lighting um, so, so that you can make it even brighter, make it better. Number five, make sure your audio is good. Now I did go out and purchased a Yeti microphone. Oh, it took me forever. I was like, oh my gosh, is this the right one? I love it. I've had it for over a year now and it has been one of the best purchases I ever made. They, it ran about a hundred dollars and it came with all the components with it. And I just love it. And it's, it's worked really well. It works a lot better than my microphone that's in my laptop. And I do want to give you a little hint when you plug in your Yeti, you can't, um, if you, if you keep it plugged in, you can't hear what's going on on your computer. So my point, I was running another video one time and then I went to record a video Well, I plugged in my Yeti and I thought I had turned off the video that I was listening to and all the way through, it was picking up the internal video as well, as well as mine. And I did not check that video. Um, my tip to you is make sure you tap, test the quality of your audio before you upload it because it was merging and all this blah, 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 all this noise was on there and it took, somebody watched it and then put in the comments like, oh my gosh, your audio is messed up. So learn the hard way, but make sure everything on your laptop is turned off. You know, listen in the, in the headset, make sure it's quiet. Now you're saying, well, I I'm new. I don't have money to buy a microphone. Can I still do this? Absolutely. If you're using the internal microphone on your laptop, just make sure your surroundings are quiet. Make sure, you know, the dog's not scratching at the door, the kids aren't banging on the door and things like that. People understand. Um, if you're doing the best you can with what you have, people are very forgiving, okay? So these are just things to look forward to to make your videos better. That's all it was. And the bonus tip, number six, you don't have to have an expensive SLR camera to videotape. I have one, it's called a, it's a logistics. It's, um, it snaps onto the top of my laptop and it's, I think I have a, a C920. If you look on Amazon, you'll see it. Actually, I'll put a link below, um, with those products. I have a product list that I keep, um, for YouTube. If you want to look at that real quick and see the picture and see what I'm talking about, I'll, I'll put the link below for you. But, um, you can even use your iPhone or your, your cell phone to, to record. I know people do it all the time. It doesn't have to be an expensive camera. You know, let that be something you work towards. If this is, um, you make a career out of this and you really want to, you know, keep growing, that's something you can grow into and maybe reward yourself, but don't feel like you have to have all of that stuff. Okay. That's, that's what this is all about. Just get started. Um, you might be nervous at first when you're making your first video. I know I, I was very, very nervous, but after you do it a few times, it's a piece of cake and you just keep getting better and more natural. And you know, I, I get, I was given this advice. This is what helped me get started. Um, somebody said, you know, when you first start posting on YouTube, nobody's going to see them because you're new and you don't have any subscribers unless you get your family. So it's a good time to suck in the beginning, right? Because nobody's seeing your videos anyway. And it's fun to keep them. Don't delete them because you can go back and look and go, oh my gosh, look how much I've progressed. Um, I'm a teacher and we tell the kids that all the time. I used to, um, actually my own children, I homeschooled them and I would keep little folders each year and you know, they'd get the third or fourth grade and I go, look, look at your handwriting back two years ago. And they'd get to eighth grade. Look what you did back in fifth grade. So they could see their growth and that it just made them really ex excited, especially when they felt like they weren't good at something, I was always there to show them, look how much better that you've gotten. So that's why you want to keep those mile markers. Um, and that's just another little tip for you. Make sure you subscribe, um, hit the notification bell and 
I will give you a video six times a week as we speak, as of this date, and I look forward to seeing you.